Hey, mushroom nerds, it's Anna McHugh. Uh, spending a little time in my backyard with this beautiful little collection of the plant pot dapperling, sometimes just called the plant pot mushroom, or I've heard it called the lemon yellow lepiato or the plant pot parasol. Anyway, it's this little dainty mushroom with a ring on the stem and yellowish gills and a little bit of sort of scaliness on this uh, very fragile cap. And you'll see them emerging from potted plants. And so this is a mushroom we see day in and day out on identification forums because people notice them and they're like, are my plants dying? Do I need to worry? Uh, you know, they're so conspicuous that, uh, you know, they come up, even people who are not particularly interested in mushrooms will be like, what in the heck is this thing? So I wanted to make sure that you know what it is so you can send this video to someone or at least the next time you see uh, you know yellow fungi popping out of your own plants you'll know what they are so uh, as I said this is sort of a dainty cap and stem mushroom they tend to grow in little clusters before they open up you can see them almost they look like little clubs or uh, you know sometimes like bowling pins vaguely but anyway you have like um, anywhere between this sort of pale yellow to really, really bright yellow mushroom. And on the top, you tend to have like a little nipple or a little umbo here, and it tends to be a little darker than the rest of the cap. Also on the cap, you can observe that you have striations. So these are just little stripy grooves along the margin of the cap. And then additionally, you have um, some little sort of like flaky scales uh, that show up on the mushroom. And so that's uh, sort of the top of it. The bottom of it, you'll see it does have, uh, you know, yellow gills and you get a yellowish spore print out of it. And then let me see, this one got battered and beaten up a little bit. Here we go. Okay, so as you can see, the final feature I really wanna highlight is this little annulus or this little ring on the stem. So that's basically like as they come up in little clubs, there will be a little protective layer at the bottom of the club and then that opens up as the mushroom opens up and it leaves this little ring on the stem. But as you can, you can see, like I just handled those mushrooms very briefly and the stems uh, no longer have have those rings so they're very very ephemeral and very fragile as far as uh, you know safety and what you want to know about this mushroom the scientific name leucocoprinus burnbaumii uh, is associated with a uh, toxin that exists in it so this isn't a mushroom that you want to eat I don't know much about the level of toxicity because this is a mushroom people typically don't eat it being so frail and fragile and it bright yellow and coming out of, you know, plant pots, it just isn't what I would consider to be a mushroom of concern uh, from a foraging perspective. But nonetheless, something you want to avoid, and certainly if you have pets that like to eat mushrooms that they find, you may want to consider, uh, you know, if you find these removing the fruiting bodies. That said, I don't think I've ever, you know, in my 16 years of mushroom hunting, talked to somebody who described a uh, <clears throat> toxicity event from these mushrooms. That doesn't mean it hasn't happened. It's just, I personally don't have any stories about it. As far as where they originate from, so this is actually a uh, tropical or subtropical species. So it does not belong in North America and it showed up in Europe I think in the 19th century in hothouses and so it basically is um, <clears throat> a mushroom that does very very well in uh, potting soil and it's kind of endemic to you know potting soils that you will get um, kind of really anywhere and so you know it's very very frequently uh, you know you have this potting soil and it doesn't do anything for years and years and you may see some mushrooms emerge out of it so anyway this is a decomposer so it is you know residing in that uh, organic material and consuming what it can uh, but again you know it's not a native it just sort of pops up and goes away uh, you can't get rid of it particularly that's <clears throat> as far as like people who come to mushroom ID forums are like, what is this thing and how do I get rid of it in my plants? And the answer is, well, it's Leucocoprinus burnbaumii and you can't really get rid of it. You can get rid of the fruiting bodies if you choose to. Uh, and you may want to also consider that sometimes the emergence of mushrooms indicates that the, your potting soil is too wet. But as far as like removing the mycelium, that's just a non-starter, unfortunately. Uh, or, well, <clears throat> from my perspective, fortunately, because I kind of like these little dudes. 
kids. But uh, anyway, so this is a very common mushroom that you will find. Uh, I also want to share an edible mushroom with you. Uh, so this is a giant puff ball. Uh, the scientific name for this is Calvatia cyanthiformis. A uh, common name is the purple spored puff ball. And as you can see, it's kind of this really interesting, um, like almost looks like a baked good with a neck. And uh, so, you know, this mushroom you'll find in, um, you know, yards and things. I see it a lot throughout the course of the fall. It's one of the first sort of edible mushrooms that I see uh, emerging as the weather starts to turn. So, um, you know, they can be, this is an average sized one. So it's about the size of a softball, maybe a little bit more. Uh, Calvatia cyanthiformis is characterized by having, of course, this, uh, what's called a sterile base. So this neck does not contain like, any spore material and then we get to the puffball part so <clears throat> um as far as its outward appearance calvatia cyanthiformis is sort of um you know a, a fawn color sort of a light brown to tan and then you start to see little bits of um <clears throat> excuse me sort of a little bit of patterning emerge that is uh, sort of a brownish purple color. And so that patterning is really distinctive for this species. There is a similar one called Calvatia craniformis, which is more like a brain in appearance. So it's more wiggly and jiggly. And it doesn't have this sort of, I don't know, very nice sort of, um, it almost looks like the cover of a leather tome or something like that. So it's really quite attractive. Uh, and as you can see, uh, it has been munched out a little bit and you can see why it's called the purple spored uh, puffball because the, uh, you know, spore mass in the middle uh, starts to become purple when it matures. However, if you're interested in eating it, so what we do, what we do is we open up the mushroom and see what has happened on the inside. All right, so, okay, so opening this up, you can see this particular uh, specimen, I would consider to be edible. It may not taste as good as it would uh, if I'd basically eaten it a day or two ago because I collected this on Saturday. It is now Monday. Uh, but as you can see, the um, mass in the middle is all pretty much white. You start to see a little bit of the purplishness forming and that is um, what is called like the central part is called the gleba. So that flesh becomes the spore mass and so like if you find this mushroom and it's mature it will be purpley and poofy on the inside or if you find it after it has gone away you'll just see like this little mass of purpley poof on the ground so uh but nonetheless you know if it is nice and white and firm on the inside if you cook it thoroughly uh you know it can have a very nice um <clears throat> flavor it's not terribly distinctive and as they get a little bit older sometimes they take on just like a I don't know how to describe it it's almost just like a sharpness to it um and that you know I think may be in part because you have to cook it a lot and the sharpness may in fact be coming from the cooking oil starting to get too hot and over you know overcooked so anyway uh you know this sterile neck and a non-sterile gleba in the middle so what that means is like the neck part you would not expect that to turn purple so if this is mature you've got purple <clears throat> powder above with this nice fawn colored thing happening on the outside that's another thing to note is that the uh you know the the skin layer it kind of sloughs off but it is you know it's thicker and more robust than the interior of the mushroom so that's one of our local um giant puff balls you can see i just tossed it over there i'm not going to eat that particular one but um i do really like finding pu puff balls especially because a lot of the times i can't go mushroom hunting unless i'm like out in the forest and i have the time to go and do that but the nice thing about puffballs and these little, you know, Leucocoprinus, burn baumii, these little plant pot mushrooms, you can observe them kind of anywhere, anytime. They like yards, they like uh, the habitats that us humans inhabit a little bit more than some of our more uh, reclusive and elegant species that reside in the woods. Anyway, uh, thanks for spending some time with me this afternoon and find a billion mushrooms. We'll talk again soon.